The Get Rich Slow Club podcast is a collaboration between Tash Edgman from Tash Invest and Anna Christina from Perla. The Get Rich Slow Club acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land we record on. From coast to coast, across land, waters and communities, we pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Any advice is general and does not consider your financial situation, needs or objectives. So consider whether it's appropriate for you. Welcome to the Get Rich Slow Club podcast, where we take you from beginner to confident investor, where we can teach you everything you need to know about investing. So come get rich slow with us. Today, we're going to talk about our best career hacks. But before we get started, what's your money win of the week? I went out for dinner last night, but I get so excited when I come to Sydney or Melbourne because I can use the Eat Club app. They don't have it in Canberra just yet. So we booked dinner and it was 30% off. So we spent $32 for two of us and got a main each and some dumplings and also a drink to share. So that was fun. That's really cheap. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So, and the app is for restaurants? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Have you used it before? No, I haven't. Oh, it's called Eat Club. Um, it's usually to try and get like seatings at quieter times. So there's usually uh-huh. more places on like weeknights or sometimes it's cheaper to get takeaway, but you, know, you just check on the app, you book it on the app and then they give you like a prepaid visa card to pay with. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm going to be completely honest. I feel like I was totally up on all this stuff back when I lived in Collingwood, like closer mm. to the city. And now that I live in the burbs and, you know, most of my money wins are like Costco and Aldi. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I have less of uh, less of the restaurant hacks and how to get that cheaper. Yeah, it's so cool because there are heaps around like South Yarra and the city. But yeah, I don't know once you get further out. Mm, yeah. Worth trying one time. What's yours? Well, yeah, now I guess now that I'm talking about it, I think I spent around $700 at Aldi, which sounds like a lot. Yeah. I know people always think like it's a lot, but when you factor in how much toilet paper you get, how Mm -hmm. much like granola and pasta and things and how many meals you can make out of that, I think it's really, really great. We also buy sometimes bulk, for example, meat, and then you can freeze some of it and you have it for later. Mm -hmm. So if you do a proper plan ahead of time, it can actually like $700 sounds like a lot. Yeah. Did you get anything from the special buys as well? No. 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 Oh no, Aldi. Did I say Aldi? Yeah. Costco. Oh my oh, gosh. Okay. Costco. Okay. That makes more sense. That makes way more sense. Sally, I was like, what? Oh my gosh. Did you I buy the Aldi? whole shop. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I was talking about Aldi and Costco. Yeah. yeah sorry. Yeah. So we went to Costco. Yeah. Aldi, I would not spend that much money at Aldi. Aldi is much of a cheaper, okay, cheaper Costco purchase. Yeah. Yeah. Costco, Costco. Sorry. Yeah. 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 So all those big bulk items, Mm -hmm. like for example, even just like cleaning supplies, Mm -hmm. getting that because why not? If you can, if you can afford it and do it bulk, it's really great. Yeah. When I first moved to Canberra, I bought like three giant packs of dishwashing tablets because they were on special and we've just finished going through the third one like a year later. So that was a huge money win. Oh yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I used to, when I was uh, living by myself, I used to do it with a friend. So we would go and like, oh, that's a good idea. so we would split it. It was much easier that way. Whereas now it's just like, I've have four people in my household. There's mm-hmm. a lot of dishes, a lot of toilet paper, a lot of yeah. everything it goes by really, really fast. So, yeah, definitely. You know. I've seen it. Um, Costco, they have 14% off a core gift cards. So I really want to go to Costco to buy some. Oh, yes. Because the core is the membership I'm obsessed with at the moment to get cheaper hotels and everything. But if you can get 14% off as well, that would be amazing. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't know if Costco pays for itself for them. And it really depends on how much you use it because obviously it's a membership Mm -hmm. kind of situation. But for us, it does. But we have to be very strategic because there's many times where you can go into Costco and literally buy everything, but you have no meals. You didn't do a proper plan. You just bought like all the chocolate bars, cleaner. yeah, vacuum cleaner and some random plates that you don't really need. Yeah. And you're like, oh no. I get so. so excited going into Costco. Like I never need platters ever, but I'm like, oh my God, there's a taco platter or like a giant chicken platter for 12. And yeah. it gets so exciting, but no, I never need that. I buy the sushi platters. Oh, I, nice. I don't know why I, love them. I just do. <laughs> it's so good. Like such good value. And even when you get a pizza or a burger at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so exactly good. what yeah. we did. We all like got hot dogs and I love that at things. Ikea when you get the dollar. Yeah. I don't know if they're a dollar anymore, but the dollar hot dogs are so good. Yeah, yeah. I think at uh, Costco it was, was it one ninety nine or two ninety nine? I can't remember right now. But I was just like, oh, and they had like bubble tea for <laughs> really for two ninety nine. I think. Oh. And we we're like, where can you get a three dollar bubble tea? Never, no just way. Costco. Yeah, just amazing. Costco. There you go. Incredible. Oh, yeah. New features. <laughs> so let's get into it. Best career hacks. Mine definitely has been building a personal brand. And I feel like personal brand is such a buzzword on social media at the moment. Everyone's kind of saying you need a personal brand and you're kind of like, hmm, what does that mean a lot of the time? But like putting myself out there online has led to so many fun career things like this podcast, writing our book together, like getting brand deals with companies like Perla, who I love. So that's definitely been the biggest hack for me. And I know it has for you as well. Yeah. I think when people look at you, they're like, well, your brand is a personal brand. Mm -hmm. So why do I need one if I'm just working a job? 
But similarly to you, I, I feel the exact same way. Had I not openly started blogging and, and writing a newsletter on finance, I wouldn't have gone and consulted with Perler. Had I not consulted with Perler, I wouldn't have gotten a job at Perler. Mm -hmm. And if I wasn't working at Perler, I wouldn't be doing this podcast, this book. And, and it's completely changed my life. I literally got a message this morning from someone on social who is expecting their second child. And they're like, I'm trying to figure out what I can do while on parental leave, while on maternity leave. Mm -hmm. And what's important for me is I would like to do some consulting on the side. And I know you did that. How did you do that? And again, it comes down to personal brand. So even if you don't want to have a social media presence in the sense that you don't want to be a content creator or an influencer, yeah. personal brand is so important, whether it's on LinkedIn or elsewhere, it is so important because people are going to think of you when they see you, when they see you posting about your job or something that you've learned, they're going to think of you when a job comes up or they're looking for a, a consultant or someone yeah, in that or role. Or even a podcast guest. Like we find our podcast guests by people posting on LinkedIn or posting on mm -hmm. Instagram and they're not like, they're not being influencers like I am. And they're not trying to look for a job in something different like you were maybe, but they're like just posting about the work that they're doing. Like so many financial advisors, so many mortgage brokers, so many accountants as well. Because you can be the best in your field, but if no one knows about it, no one's going to think of you. Yeah. And I have like quite a few, there's a few financial advisors and mortgage brokers who just spring to mind straight away whenever I think of them, because I just see them every day pop up on my feed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So personal brand is a big one because it's changed my career trajectory yeah. and it's changed yours as well. So much. Yeah. In very different ways. And even if you don't know what you want to do, if you just start talking about what you're interested in, like opportunities will just come and find you if people relate to what you're saying. So even if you're like, I don't really know what I want to do yet. I'm not sure if I want to make a course or write a book or consult or anything. Like just start sharing more stuff publicly. Like do one of those LinkedIn, like 10 things I learned lists and people love them. Yeah. Well, that's actually what I did. Right. Cause I was working in product at a different company. It was um, a three-sided marketplace. So it's a completely different setup than working in, in finance. Mm. And for me, I wanted to just talk about my financial journey. I wanted to talk about learning to invest, how to invest for your kids. What are the things that I feel passionate about, how I'm trying to reduce my expenses and increase my income. And what does that look like? And what does fire financial independence retire early look like for me? And I just wanted to share my journey. Mm. And just from sharing my journey, I didn't think, hey, it would absolutely change my whole life and my whole career. Yeah, especially if it wasn't related back then either. You're like, oh, these are two separate things, like a hobby and work. But yeah. no, they're one. How good. Yeah, personal branding. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. Worth it. It can be a bit scary to put yourself out there, though. How did you feel about posting all of your financial stuff back then? Yeah, well, I never talked about dollar amounts specifically. It was all about percentages. And I still do that now. Like, I'm happy to talk about percentages and, and things that I'm thinking about. But it is scary because mm -hmm. there's a lot of nuance when it comes to finance, as we know, right? Like, you don't know what people's situation was in their past, what they've sacrificed, what they haven't sacrificed, what their life looks like. And my life looks very different now than it did 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about, back then especially, how did you feel about your employer finding your blog and reading that you wanted to retire early? Yeah, I, I've always been so fortunate. I've had really great employers. <laughs> so I had a lot of people in my company. We even had like our own Slack channel that was about finance. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So we had a very supportive space where everyone talked about investing and it was a company where I also had options in the company. So often people were talking about like, when are you selling your shares in the company? When are you holding on? What are you thinking? You're going to double down. Like mm -hmm. people would talk about that. So it was a great space for it. And a lot of us did talk about the financial independence movement. And many times they would have those conversations of like, I don't want to retire early. Ooh. And that would spark a whole other conversation. Whole conversation. Yeah. That's good that they were so supportive. Yeah. Yeah. Something that comes on from personal brand is definitely building a network around you and networking. I always thought networking was like, you had to go stand at an event and do the awkward, like chat to different people. But having a personal brand has helped me network so easily because people just kind of, it's easy to reply to someone's Instagram story compared to like going up to someone in real life and saying, hi, how are you? What do you do for work? Like that's been such a good hack as well. What is networking for you? Because again, I feel like that word is so taboo. Networking, like, bleh, it sounds black, yeah. but what is it for you? Literally just following people back on Instagram and then liking their stories or replying to their stories. Like that's how I've met so many wonderful people, mm -hmm. just being interested in their lives online. Yeah, I think it's about finding a common ground really mm -hmm. is what it is, right? Often I'd go to networking events and find other product managers. I find other product managers message me all the time because mm -hmm. they're like, I know you work in product. This is what I'm thinking about. I'm trying to move into that career. I'm trying to do X, Y, Z. And that's a common ground. Whereas other people I'll talk about because they're, they weren't born in Australia. So they're yeah. trying to navigate finances as, as an expat. And those are the common grounds that people look for. And you just build a community from there, right? Yeah, but it can be the most random common grounds as well. Like, sure. Oh, what a cool Pilates class. Yeah. I love that. And people like love those conversations and it comes across as more friendly and less like you're trying to get something from them mm -hmm. as well. Because I find I'm a bit skeptical sometimes online where lots of people just 
ask for stuff directly. And then I'm a bit like, oh, maybe not. But if someone's been friendly to me first and I'm a little more open to it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you never know what doors it can open for you, right? Yeah. Um, something Lawrence did, he was on our podcast a few episodes ago now, maybe one of the 60 ones. He bought our book and was sharing it and sharing our pre- pre-order webinars, pre-order webinars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up thinking of him to come on the podcast, but because he'd like supported us and been in our messages and he like made himself very known as a supportive person. He was at the front of my brain when I was like, oh, we need an accountant. Yeah. Yeah. Such a good hack. (laughs) And I was actually thinking that recently. I was thinking about how um, he has such great content around starting a business. And if you ever wanted one, like Mm -hmm. he'd be the first person I'd think of. Right. And again, it's an example of networking and personal brand and how they're all interconnected. Yeah. And I wouldn't have followed him back if he hadn't have bought our book and tagged us a few times. And he mm-hmm. left us a really good Amazon review yes, as well. So he like so good. got our attention from doing that. Yeah. Love it. Love it. So if you want to go on someone's podcast, buy their book and post about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Share our book. Oh, I love, cause you talk a lot about this next one, being transparent about your wage. So this is a hot topic. Mm-hmm. I feel wage transparency is something I feel really, really passionate about because it's something that I've experienced in my very first job out of university, um, finding out that I was underpaid in the company, finding out that other people were paid more than me because I was I was fresh. I had no experience. They were able to underpay me. But had I not have the, had those open conversations, I wouldn't have found out about it. Now, the flip side is, what do you do with that information, right? Mm -hmm. Like, is it valuable to know that you're underpaid? Are you going to be resentful? Are you going to be angry? Are you going to be upset? Sure. Emotions are a part of it. It sucks. It sucks to know that you're underpaid. But what it empowered me to do was ask for a wage increase, look for other jobs. And surely enough, like the next job that I jumped to was at a higher pay grade because I, I, you need to ask for more this time. Exactly. I knew my, my worth and my value. And I knew what, what work I could do in that, in that space. And that's happened like a few times in my life where I found out either I'm overpaid or underpaid or somewhere in the middle. And that's why I think wage transparency is so, so important, Mm -hmm. but we have to go in it knowing that our feelings and emotions might take, (laughs) you know, might take take a toll. Yeah. Yeah. might take over. I had a conversation with someone a while ago and um, I I said to, they were newer to the company at the time. And I said, and we were kind of in the same role. And I was like, Hey, I don't know if you're open to it, but I'm, I'm happy to share my wage. So if you want to ever chat and she was like, nah, not interested. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And that was one of those things where it was like, cool. I gave you the power to make that decision and maybe you're not ready for it. Cause if you're having a bad day or just not emotionally there, or you are worried that you're underpaid, or maybe, you know, you're, you already know. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or maybe, you know, you're overpaid. Maybe Ooh, you negotiated okay. something where you're like, Oh, I'm actually at a higher pay grade than this person. I don't want to, I yeah, feel awkward. Cause that's the flip side too. You know, there's been situations where I knew I was higher paid than someone else. And then having those conversations of like, how do you navigate that? Especially yeah. if you're in different roles. Mm -hmm. it's easier to know when you're like doing the same role, but if you're in a different role in a different career path and someone's paid more than you or you're paid more than them and they're just not there, that's hard. It is very hard. I've mostly worked in jobs where it's like you get paid the pay grade. And if you've been there longer, you get like a set increase. And Mm -hmm. that's mostly it. I've not really worked in too many where you can negotiate except for now on like more business stuff. But yeah, it's really hard when you don't even know where to start with some of this and like trying to decide whether to ask someone. I think it's hard if you want to know, like trying to approach those conversations being like, Hey, I'd love some help. I'd love to know how much you're paid or how much other people are paid. Cause some people aren't very open to sharing that still. Mm -hmm. In my old job, I know that uh, wage transparency wasn't as open, but there was a spreadsheet where all of the engineers and product managers and designers, like all of tech would put their numbers in if you wanted to opt in. So there was a spreadsheet that someone started with people's like role name and their wage. And that way it was, people were able to oh, openly talk that. about money. I'm so yeah. curious. Oh, I would love access to all these spreadsheets. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's amazing. I know that you negotiated as well when you were, you said that you were negotiating for a role that was also within the pay grades, but you negotiated yeah, something I negotiated well. $5,000 more because I had experience being a support worker beforehand. So mm-hmm. I was saying like, I'm not, yes, I'm a new grad OT, but I also have years of experience mm-hmm. beforehand. And they just said yes to that. Yeah. Yeah. That was helpful. That's, that is really helpful. And then sometimes you can also get a bonus if you refer someone. So that's another way to get like a bit more money. If you're. Yeah. That one always like annoys me a little bit when they don't give people a pay increase, but Mm. then they email out my old job used to do this. They email out being like $15,000 bonus. If you refer someone who lives in like Tasmania or something and it's like, okay, I know it's hard to hire for there, but also you just pay someone else who's here to go there. Yeah. Right now at at Perler in my current role, we all know each other's wages and we all know everyone's kind of situation as well. So is everyone happy? 
I haven't had a conversation with everyone oh, about, about yeah, happiness tank. level, but I think the, where I've seen it work often with wage transparency is understanding people's roles and understanding bands. So in the places where I've seen it be really successful, and these are more larger companies is if you have a role. So for example, let's say you're a product manager, just cause that's my experience being like, this is what a junior product manager is. This is what a product manager, this is what a senior one, this is a director one. And you still have bands within that. So you know that it's from X to Y income, but you need to hit all these skill sets to move on to the next level. And that yeah. way you're, you're still kind of in your world where you have these bands, but you know what you need to do to move on to the next place. So you can clearly see your path and That's your trajectory, it. but also it helps motivate you. If you want that higher income, you need to check all the boxes. You need to become a stronger person within your role. You need to have the skill sets and so forth. That's so good. Having a clear set, yeah. like this is your career path if you want it. Yeah. And that's important, right? Yeah. That's important for, for career development as well, because I don't think it's beneficial to anyone, whether you're the employer or the employee to not have a clear path of yeah. where you want to grow. Because then you'll just look elsewhere when you can have a nice job description on Seek and you're like, oh, that looks like my next role. I'll just move there instead. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think companies definitely miss out on retaining people sometimes because mm -hmm. they won't give some people increases and then you see them just look for another job instead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's and that's the hard part. I think you can usually get a bigger bump by jumping roles every every two years, which is really beneficial. But if you're in a role that is constantly changing, constantly evolving, you can grow in that. Like that was one of the things that I did in my old employer. I, I think I held like seven, eight different titles yeah, and crazy. jumped around, but it allowed me to get to where I wanted. And sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you're like, I don't know what's out there. And I'm going to try everything and see. Yeah. Yeah. Because you'll find something that sticks. You yeah. know, you might be like, actually, I'm really good at this. I didn't is there a career in it? And that was something that happened with product as well. We've kind of gone into our fourth point a little bit already, switch jobs when they don't serve you. And also we've mentioned having a side hustle as well. If you aren't really sure what you want to do and you want to develop some new skills, like my social media stuff started as a side hustle and now it's my full-time job, which is really fun, but I would never have quit to do this full-time if I didn't know that I liked it already. Yeah. And when you started your social, did you know what the future held? Like, no, definitely not. Whereas it's just like, this is a hobby. This is fun. Like, did you have the intention of making money? No, no. I just posted one day randomly. Like there was no real plan behind it. I was bored. I saw other people doing it. I was like, here's my little money diary. I thought I'd get like maybe a thousand followers, but no, never thought it would be like this. Yeah. Not a hundred thousand. No, it's crazy. <laughs> Plus more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the kind of cool thing, right? Like you find something that you're passionate about and you learn along the way because it's not about just creating content, right? Like mm. there's a strategic kind of methodology that you follow as well, that you've learned that, that takes time, nurturing effort. Like I see how much, <laughs> how much mm -hmm. you do it. And I'm just like, wow, so impressed because it's not a, yeah, it's a 30 second clip, but how long and how many hours have you spent thinking about that? Yeah. I'm trying to get it to be perfect. Yeah. It's yeah. I never thought I would be good at marketing because obviously I've always worked in healthcare roles. Mm -hmm. So I never even thought I would be good at this, but turns out I'm kind of good at marketing, which is fun. Do you have any quick tips for anyone who's like, oh, I kind of want to start a side hustle, but I need a social presence. And like, what are the just post and yeah. pay attention. Like I think my skill has been, has come from paying attention to what does well with other people's stuff. So really mm. like start engaging with the people that you think your audience would follow and see what they're doing well. And like, don't copy them exactly, but be like, why has this clip got a million views from someone else? Like, what is the hook? What's the engagement? What are people commenting about? And then try and do something similar for yours, but it's just trial and error. Like the more you post, the more you'll find what sticks and don't stick to the same thing as well. Like try lots of different stuff because you never know what will work. Yeah. It's, it's funny. Cause like I chat with you quite a bit, obviously I don't have as big of a social presence, but recently I've made it a rule that I will Posting post every, every single day. Yeah. So I'm almost a month out of posting every single day and some things like do really well and <laughs> some things don't, but I'm, I've learned that by going fast and going hard, I'm learning so much in these past like month mm -hmm. than I have from sporadically posting. Yeah. And you never know what will do well. Like I'm also surprised sometimes I'll think of something and I'll be like, oh, this probably won't do too well. And then it will still do really well. And I'm like, oh, this is a whole new thing I can post about now. Cause you never quite know what will take off. And I've got a pretty good idea, but sometimes mm -hmm. it still surprises me. Yeah. And then other times you spend forever on something and it, it like flops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's definitely good to just post it anyway, especially when you're starting out. Cause you can like have that trial and error period to just see what resonates with your audience. Yeah, which is crazy because now it's like you started as a little side hustle mm. thing on the side and it is now your full-time job. And my content's evolved heaps. Like if you look all the way back, I had these like really bad Canva posts that were just one block blue color with random text on top. Like that was my original post. And now I've got reels with like lots of different clips and lots of different text over the top. So it definitely evolves. Yeah, yeah. And the product evolves, like the media has evolved, right? Like yeah. reels weren't as big. No, when I think back then. Yeah. yeah. And stories are so good now and you just, you get better at it the more you do it. 
Yeah, you learn a lot. Yes, <laughs> so fun. Oh, this flows in really well. God, we've made you've made a great list. Anna did this list for prep, but I love it so much. <laughs> they flowed in so nicely. The fifth final tip is have a growth mindset. Yeah. Which is kind of what we were just talking about. Yeah. I think this one's the most important one in any capacity. And some of my favorite quotes when it comes to like working in tech are all about like fail fast, fail quickly, because it's all about having a growth mindset. So our last tip, having a gro- growth mindset is the most important one because you're, we're going to fail along the way. Mm-hmm. We're going to do things that might not have been as advantageous or as good, but like we have to keep learning from it. And that's exactly what you're talking about in social. Mm-hmm. You yeah. tried a bunch of things, didn't work. You pivoted, you tried new things, yeah. you adjusted. And that's because breaks. you have a growth mindset. Yeah. Like I haven't posted consistently the whole four years. Like I've definitely had breaks along the way, but yeah, just keep coming back to it and seeing like, hmm, what's next? We'll try writing a book. We'll try starting a podcast. We'll just give things a go. Yeah. Yeah. Just like throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. Yeah. Just but being yes. strategic about the spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> just saying yes when something appears and you're like, okay, cool. Like this works. I'm going to say, yes, it aligns. I can make it align. Let's do it. Yeah. And I think like with the growth mindset, it's trying all those things and seeing what you like. It doesn't mean saying yes to everything. No, especially if it doesn't align, it's going to ruin your brand. Like I said, no to quite a few things, but anything I know that I can have control over, like the podcast or the book I've said yes to Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and kind of putting the feelers out for things as well. Like I didn't think I wanted to write a book for ages, but I was still talking to lots of my friends who are authors, talking to people like Evan, Emma, Molly, you, Mm -hmm. like I was open to it beforehand. And same with the podcast. Like I've met Owen from Rask and Kate from Rask and the guys from Equity Mates and even Glenn from My Money Money. Like I've met all these people and I was kind of open to it beforehand. So if you kind of network and chat to people, good things might come. And the right time, right? Like, I think timing is everything as well. Mm -hmm. I think at that point, like we've already had a bit of the podcast going, you have a huge brand and it kind of just worked Worked. timing wise. Yeah. Even with the podcast as well, I probably couldn't have started this any earlier because I was doing random things with my life and Mm -hmm. moving around. Mm -hmm. Like it wouldn't have worked, but now like the timing's been perfect. So what's next? I don't know. (laughs) It doesn't matter because you have a growth mindset. So it's like something will happen, right? And you might have an amazing idea and it goes from there. And I think that's something that's really important, even, even from my end, like from working in tech, I didn't always come in t- from tech, right? Like mm. we've talked about this before. I came from an art background. How do you go from art to finance? And it doesn't matter. At the yeah. end of the day, so many of our skills are transferable. We can easily move from one place to another place if we're just willing to learn. Yeah. And we don't say like, I can't do this. Try and think about like, how can you make it work? Like there's so many things I probably shouldn't have done because I didn't have the time, but mm. it was a good opportunity. So I like rescheduled things and made it work yeah. anyway. Yeah, exactly. And because you can learn. And yeah. that's the most important skill set, honestly. Yeah. That's that's what makes you resilient. That's what makes you hireable. That's what makes you succeed if you're an entrepreneur mm-hmm. or doing a side hustle. It's constantly learning because for other people, it's like, it's too hard. It's in the too hard bucket yeah. and therefore I won't do it. And that's honestly, I think that's the number one thing for me that helped me in my career trajectory. Cause I was like, oh, I'll do that. I'll try that. And yeah. sometimes you don't like it. And sometimes it sucks. And sometimes I was doing things I hated, hated, hated. But I kept telling myself, listen, it's going to make me a better person and better employee, mm-hmm. more resilient. I understand this better. And it's going to help me jump into the next role. Yeah, I'm not even saying like, I don't want to do that. But people say I can't all the time. And it's mm-hmm. like, you can't or you just don't want to. But that's a huge difference. Yeah, we can do a lot more things than we think we can. Yeah. Yay, fun. This has been a good one. Lots of tips. Awesome. (laughs) Yay, bye. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us. If you found this episode helpful, please rate us five stars, write a review, or share with a friend. If you're new to investing, make sure to listen to our first 10 episodes. Follow us at Get Rich Slow Club or Tash at Tash Invest or me at Anna Christina. This show was brought to you by Natasha Edgman, who is an authorized representative. 12-99881 of Guideway Financial Services, AFSL 420367, and Perla, who is an authorised representative, 128-1540, of Sanlam Private Wealth, AFSL 337927. Knowledge is power, especially when it comes to investing. So make sure you check out our financial services guides and read the product disclosure statement and target market determination for any investments you're considering. See our show notes for more info. 